How common is monster rape among adventurers? We have a big problem with it. The monsters have started carrying pepper spray. Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Scatteray and welcome to another D&D Green Text video. This video we're celebrating the third video in a row with uh, regular uploads. You might have noticed a pattern here where uh, we're uploading every Thursday and Sunday. So, hey, why don't you leave a like for that, huh? Come on, come on man, press the like button. Come on, dude, smash it. Smash the like button. <laughs> Alright, anyway, uh, without any further ado, yeah, enjoy the video. You're in the city. There's a cheap looking hotel and an expensive looking one. Alright, what's the area around us look like? It's the downtown part of the city. Is there anyone around? No. Are there any other buildings around? All closed. So just really fancy hotel and a Motel 6 right next to each other? Yeah, hurry up and pick. Can we try to talk to... No, just pick. A few minutes later. Using downtime between missions for character interactions. GM huffing loudly every time a character starts a conversation. Starts giving people dev glares any time they aren't throwing dice. Interrupts the planning phase because it's taking too long and he doesn't want to sit here all night listening to us talk. Eventually becomes genuinely angry when asked to describe things beyond the bare minimum. Like holy sh**, if you just wanna throw dice and count numbers, go play a war game or something. Damn, this one definitely goes in the at least top 5 worst DMs we've seen, doesn't it? I haven't been really keeping track, but this is a really bad one. Attack the evil overlord. His housemaid intervenes and kicks our ass. Get in a fight with the local baron. His manservant breaks my arm and beats up everyone else. Try to steal from the local farmer. His slave boy single-handedly captures us and turns us over to the police. What is it with servants and slaves being so powerful? Is there some secret fight club they're all in that no one is telling us about? Anon, what's the first rule? Supposed to have a game today. GM cancels because he's tired from work. That's life, friend. Get used to it. Now you must get to work and be tired next time to extract justice. Party decides to go monster hunting to earn some coin. They take the bounty for a rust monster in a distant mine. Armed with the best wood money can buy, they set off to kill it. One splatted bug later, they find a tunnel leading deeper into the earth from whence the rust monster came. They delve deep and find themselves in the underdark. As a merciful DM, you decide to not deploy the encounter you had planned for when they first exited the tunnel and politely remind them that we go towards that red glow in the distance. Party stumbles upon a flow of magma with a bridge over it, leading towards edgy elf city. It's guarded by what looks like a troll, but he's on fire. We attack the troll. Why? Because we're not going to pay any troll toll. Big surprise, they TPK. Who would have expected attacking a flaming monster with a wooden armor and weapons was a bad idea? Party calls you a killer DM for purposefully setting up encounters that would definitely kill them. Why are my players so retarded? Worst that guy I ever had to deal with was a few years back. We had a cool but disabled bro in our group with a neural condition that meant he lacked most of his sense of touch, which created other medical complications in turn. He didn't like to be touched at all and the rest of us respected this. That guy kept jostling him and talking about how cool it would be to have a superpower like that and all the jackass tears <laughs> he would do if he couldn't feel pain. Anyway, he got kicked out of the group and then showed up for the next week's session as if nothing had happened. GM eventually had to call the cops to get rid of him. That's f***ed up. Tell players they're going to be starting in the Notshire. Mostly halflings, a town full of humans and some elves in the forest. We won't be staying here forever, just for the first few sessions. All players make halflings. Okay, seems reasonable given the starting location. Immediately decide they're all going to play violent racist halfling supremacists who will purge the non-halflings in the name of short folk supremacy. Um, players, don't you think you should reconsider? We fill some pumpkins with gunpowder and give them as a gift to the humans. They'll cook them and explode. Players... Hey, that elf wizard has been captured by bandits and is being kept in a cage. Well, I've just decided my character is an anti-wizard and anti-elf racist, so I slit her throat while she is singing. Players, please. I have changed my name to Halfler, Halfling Hitler, and want to start a race riot against the filthy non-halflings. <coughs> this, campaign over. We're playing Dark Heresy. Okay, no way this <coughs> has ever happened, but I chuckled anyway. <laughs> I like his optimism. Be me, DMing my first campaign, a heavily modified LMOP. B, not me, party of six, all of us friends in college, all new to the game. The sorcerer is a dragonborn. 
Rest of the party is largely irrelevant to the story. Cragmo Castle encounter. What all do we see around the castle? Uh, a donkey? What's the donkey doing? Someone jokes, waiting for Shrek, duh. Light bulb, that JPEG. Please make a perception check on the donkey. Druid steps forward. Natural one. Not on my watch. The donkey trots away from you deeper into the woods. Can we follow it? <laughs> you follow the donkey to a large campsite where a large ogre is sitting alone. Players are in various states of shaking my head. What's the ogre's name, Anon? <laughs> Anon, what's his name? <laughs> Anon. Shreg with a G. <laughs> Suddenly, Dragonborn Sorcerer. Can you roll for hotness on the donkey? With what? Note, we have a house rule slash meme where I roll 1d10 for how hot an NPC is on a 1 to 10 scale. I will not roll for how hot an animal is. What the f is wrong with? I'm basically a dragon. This could be the love of my life. Oh. Finally clicks in my head. I'm an idiot. Roll for hotness in the open. 8. The donkey is an 8 out of 10. I make flattery eyes at the donkey. <gasps> I refuse to play a donkey being seduced by a dragonborn, especially because I cannot do an Eddie Murphy voice. We're gonna stop the narrative there. Just don't make hybrid babies. We don't talk about Shrek free, Anon. It's all good. My face when I give my party Shrek and the PC is now trying to fuck donkey. To trap a metagamer. Be me, bad DM because I'm too timid to call out metagaming. Rarely have problems but for one player who can't help himself. He's one of my most enthusiastic players but he's so well read on the game he can't unlearn what he knows for his character. Idea that PNG. Running homebrew campaign. PCs enter a tower I describe as being empty but for scattered corpses of humanoids with tentacles on their face. Barbarian, the metagamer, is being overly cautious despite having never seen these creatures before and even mentions an elder brain. I let it slide. They get to the lower level and I describe a very large, dead, rotting brain and a score more humanoid corpses like before. Barbarian actually has a decent intelligence score so he investigates the room. I tell him there's a large vat behind the brain. My face when he proceeds to dump oil in the vat without even asking what's in it and lights it on fire. Quick calculations of oil burning on top of vat liquid but leaving contents virtually unharmed. Two other players are visibly cringing but know not to metagame, so they just follow his character. They dump as much oil as they have through the rest of the tower and light it up as they leave. Tower is still in stone so only some things inside it will burn. By not fully inspecting that vat, my metagaming player has just inadvertently allowed for the growth of a neophilid. Think I'm going to prep all my encounters this way now. Metagaming will cause a far worse result. Edit. A little more info on this player. I threw in a deck of many things because I like chaos. Barbarian physically kept the rest of the party from drawing a card. Player is also constantly asking for magic armor and weapons, despite each party member already having so many I ignore max attunement slots. Describe a magic shield in a shop. Player rolls specifically to see if it's cursed as he's looking up the item on his phone. 12. Me. It's definitely magical item. Doesn't buy the shield. Am I justified in being a little irritated? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're justified being more than a little irritated. A college game where all the players were business majors. Way back in 2002, I was hosting some of my early, real DMing experiences and got together a group of four players who were all business majors. Early in their adventure, they encountered a tavern that had been abandoned because of nearby monsters. They defeated the monsters, moved into the tavern, and then things got weird. Over the next few hours, they made asset sheets of everything in the tavern, put together a business plan of how to revitalize the tavern, evaluated their character abilities for maximum revenue. The next 5 sessions, about 15 hours, was the party making engineering plans to expand the tavern, negotiating with suppliers, hiring staff, and occasionally going out to slay monsters for more loot to continue their quest to build the best tavern. They were making design plans on a 1x4 grid paper, then taking it to Kinko's to blow up to 1-inch grids and having meetings to discuss layouts to optimize customer flow. 
This was not the story I intended. They abandoned the actual main quest regarding a Fey Lord, but they were so happy using their business knowledge to build a tavern in a D&D game that I couldn't bring myself to push them back into the adventure. After 5 sessions, which was a good ending time due to changing schedules, I declared that they had succeeded and they were quite happy with having won at business in D&D. So that's how a group of business majors beat a D&D game. <laughs> that's pretty f good, man. The deck of many alignment changes. Be me, neutral evil warlock and the total bad guy. For the entire campaign, I've been the living personification of it's what my character would do. Party finds a deck of many things. As is tradition for a total asshole with a high charisma score, I persuade the barbarian to draw a card. Barbarian draws a card. DM tells Barbarian that he has no idea what the card is or what it does. Barbarian shrugs and puts the card in his pocket. Rest of party asks to see it. Barbarian tells them to piss off. Next night, in typical aged douchebag fashion, I try to rummage through the barb's stuff while he's asleep. Failed stealth roll, Barbarian catches me red-handed. You got a death wish or something? I managed to persuade the Barbarian that I wasn't going to take anything. Although I was, and I just wanted to take a look at the card. Barbarian pulls out the card and shows it to me. It's the f moon card. I try to persuade him to give it to me. Persuasion fails. Okay, I threaten him. It also fails. Barbarian rolls his eyes. Still holding the card, he sighs and says, You know, I really wish that you weren't such a massive <coughs> My lawful good warlock forsakes his patron, becomes a redemption paladin, and spends the rest of the campaign spending every single coin he earns on making restitution for the wrongs he committed. Alright, quick note, if you don't know what the moon card is, it allows you to cast the wish spell, which is a 9th level conjuration, um, 1d3 times. And if you don't know how wish works, then, I don't know, google that on your own. Alright, that was it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did and subscribe for more. As always, a big thank you to all the Patreons, whose name you can see on screen right now. And if you want to become a Patreon, there's a link below. For only $2 a month, you can get early access to every new video and also support the channel. So, if you want to check it out, there's a link below. Or patreon.com slash There's also links below to my Twitch livestream and to the Discord server that you can join if you want to share your stories, get more involved. And yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.